Hello 2025. 2024 was a massive year for construction. We saw record-breaking skyscrapers, hollowed out mountains, and even Arctic airports. But the next 12 months is shaping up to be no slouch either, and there are some huge milestones coming up over the next year. These are the top 25 construction projects to keep your eyes on in 2025. Let's start quite literally at the top with the Burj Bengati in Dubai, which will be the tallest building completed this year. And if you're a fan of sky-high luxury apartments and diamond-encrusted watches, then this one is a bit of you. At 557 meters, it'll be not only the tallest building to complete in 2025, but also the tallest residential building in the world. Two and three bedroom apartments are going to be spread across 104 floors, with the roof topped off with this enormous crown of glass panes shaped like diamonds. The Burj Bengati Jacob & Co Residences is a collaboration between developer Bengati Properties and Jacob & Co Jewelry. It's not clear whether any of these flats are going to actually come with a free supercar or a diamond watch, but if you have the cash for a penthouse in a jewelry inspired skyscraper, you can probably afford to shell out for your own. Also in Dubai is the Burj Azizi. Currently under construction, when it completes in 2028, it'll be the world's second tallest building at a whopping 725 meters. Now, the Burj Azizi has a mix of features, including a hotel, shopping mall, and apartments. So it won't take the crown from the Burj Bengati as the tallest apartment building, but at just 100 or so meters shorter than the Burj Khalifa, it's got other things to gloat about. Yet another building setting records in Dubai this year will be this, the Seal Tower. At 365 meters, this will be the world's tallest hotel. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's more than 200 meters shorter than the Burj Bengati. It's like they're not even trying. But one thing the Seal Tower does have is this, a 76 floor, 300 meter high atrium complete with an infinity pool and jaw dropping views of the Persian Gulf. And again, if you can't decide between a hotel room here or a flat there, you can probably afford both. Yes, I know, we're on number four and we're still in Dubai, but 2025 could shed some light on one of the skyline's greatest mysteries. Back in 2021, the Ain Dubai was the latest megastructure to hit the Emirates skyline, but just five months later, the massive wheel ground to a halt. The official explanation was that it had closed for improvement works and would reopen in a matter of months, but that never happened. Back in April last year, a representative told Arab News that it may reopen in a few months, and the wheel has been spotted moving, albeit very slowly, a few times since. It's worth keeping in mind just how massive the Iron Dubai is. It's nearly 100 meters taller than the second biggest wheel in the world, and almost twice as high as the London Eye. Dubai's earned a reputation for building big, but with the Iron Dubai, it may have finally bitten off more than it could chew. Either way, 2025 could be crunch time for this enormous megastructure. Ever since the line was unveiled in 2022, Saudi Arabia's been grabbing the world's attention with increasingly implausible mega-projects, many of which fall under the Neom development. The biggest question everyone's had about these schemes is will they ever be built, and if so, will they actually look anything like their renders? Well, last year we started to get a few clues. It was reported that some projects are being reconsidered following a drop in revenue from oil exports, and that an announcement would follow on what would be changed or axed. What has been confirmed is that the first milestone in the construction of the line has been scaled back to a mere 2.4 kilometers, though that would still be a massive building. While Saudi Arabia's mega projects have proven controversial, and there does now seem to be some pragmatism creeping in, things aren't really slowing down that much. This nation is using its considerable resources to diversify its economy and change its PR narrative with construction projects. Completely separately, the privately developed Jeddah Tower is also set to restart construction in 2025, finally continuing its one kilometer climb into the sky. Onto railways now, and a massive project to keep track of this year is Brightline West. The US has been struggling to build a high-speed rail network since the 1960s, when then-President Johnson declared his ambition to play catch-up with Japan's Shinkansen. 
California high-speed rail, the official bid to become the state's first high-speed train line has been derailed by spiralling costs and arguments over land acquisition. So what makes Brightline West any different? Well, it's a privately owned project aiming to link Las Vegas with Southern California. It's doing that by building a 218-mile track mostly alongside the existing I-15 highway. Construction work started last year and is due to complete in time for the 2028 LA Olympics. Now, the US isn't the only country building new railways, but this project isn't being built to replace cars. It's being built to replace, well, another railway. This 870 km network will run from Estonia in the north to Poland in the south and will plug a huge gap in Europe's high-speed rail service. It'll also replace the older east-west orientated network that reflected the region's historic connection with Russia and the Soviet Union. Rail Baltica will feature some incredible stations by heavyweight architects like Zaha Hadid, as well as more environmental features like eco-ducts designed to allow wildlife to pass across the rail lines in peace. Now, we could mention railways without talking about one of the biggest under construction right now, Britain's second high-speed railway, commonly known as HS2. In October 2024, after the Labour Party returned to power in the UK following the summer election, the then Transport Secretary Louise Haig announced the line will terminate inside London after the previous government hinted it may stop just short over at Old Oak Common. But a month later, Haig was ousted from her position, so now, who knows? Ultimately, no one really knows what to expect, but if all else fails, we do at least know that at some point after 2033, we'll be able to take a very fast train from Birmingham to a small town on the outskirts of London. Or not. Watch this space, but I wouldn't hold your breath. One thing that definitely is completing this year, despite some very well-funded opposition, is the Gordie Howe Bridge. Nearly a quarter of the 664 billion US dollars of trade between the US and Canada goes back and forth between Detroit and Windsor. Every day, more than 300 million dollars worth of goods are shipped across this very overcrowded bridge. So back in 2004, a plan was announced to build a new bridge downstream to ease congestion and boost trade. Sounds great, right? Well, not if you're Manuel Moron, billionaire owner of said overcrowded bridge. He earned a lot of money off the toll fees from the bridge and the duty-free shops on either side. So much so that from 2004 onwards, he waged a huge campaign to prevent the Gordie Howe Bridge from being built. Ultimately, those attempts failed, and last year we shared these tantalizing pictures of the two sides of the bridge deck inching closer together. After seven years of construction, this amazing feat of engineering is finally nearing completion. Now, a well-placed infrastructure hub can make or break the fortunes of a region. Just as Changi Airport changed the fortunes of Singapore, Iraq is hoping to do the same with this, the Grand Four port. Along with a new 1,200km railway linking the port to Turkey, this is part of an ambitious plan to make the country a logistics superpower and the new gateway to Europe. But with infrastructure, it's never just a case of build it and they will come. For every Changi, there's also a Ciudad Real, Spain's $1 billion airport that closed three years after opening due to a lack of customers. As well as this, there's also the obvious security concerns. With phase one due to complete in 2025, this could be sink or swim for the whole project. Now, if you think we're done with Iraq, then think again, because this year we'll also see the completion of a new building by one of the world's biggest architects. On our social media last year, we brought you pictures of the Central Bank of Iraq nearing completion designed by Zaha Hadid Architects. We see a lot of very impressive designs for buildings, and let's just say they don't always turn out looking how they're supposed to, but this one looks absolutely spot on. The tower's being built in Baghdad, where the late Zaha Hadid was born. So, as well as standing as a symbol of Iraq's future, it's a monument to one of the key figures from its past. Also looking to the future this year is Japan, which is hosting the Osaka Expo 2025 an international showcase of technology and ideas for the future. The expo is being hosted on Yumashima Island in Osaka Bay, and at its centre is this, the ring, the largest wooden structure in the world. At 700 metres in diameter, it uses 27,000 cubic metres of wood. 
Designed by architect So Fujimoto, it's a modern version of historical Japanese carpentry typically used to build temples. The ring includes a roof terrace that allows visitors a view of the whole site, as well as the water performances that are scheduled to take place next to the island. Okay, so we're around the halfway point now and it's time to get a bit more cultured. Let's head over to Abu Dhabi, which this year is going to see the grand opening of its very own Guggenheim Museum. Designed by Frank Gehry, it's characterised by a series of interconnected organic blocks that evoke images of desert dunes and traditional Islamic architecture. The exterior is clad in a combination of titanium, steel and glass, which creates a shimmering effect in the sunlight. Now, the museum was originally due to open back in 2011 as part of a vast $27 billion cultural district, which also included a branch of the Louvre and the Zayed National Museum. In total, this project has been delayed four times, including once when the project owner recalled the tender for its concrete suppliers. Now, we can't mention the Guggenheim or Frank Gehry without, of course, mentioning Bilbao, which started the craze for contemporary art museums back in 1997 with this iconic building. But the Spanish city hasn't lost its taste for superstar architects or fine arts. 2025 will see the completion of the extension of the Bilbao Fine Arts Museum. The opening of the Guggenheim Bilbao is largely credited with transforming a post-industrial city into a thriving cultural destination, creating a blueprint which will go on to be copied time and again. With the opening of this new wing, we'll see anew what this city is made of. Sticking in Spain, let's head down to Barcelona, where 2025 is going to be a huge year for a global icon. Gaudi's masterpiece, the Sagrada Familia, will see two huge milestones this year, with the completion of the Jesus Christ Tower and the Chapel of the Assumption. The Basilica was designed with 18 monumental towers in total, each dedicated to a biblical figure, with the tallest for Jesus himself. The finishing touch being added later this year will be a 17 metre tall cross which will take the height of the tower to a huge 172.5 metres. Gaudi began work on the Sagrada Familia but there's still a long way to go before it's due to fully complete in 2034. We're heading over to Greece now, and if the Sagrada Familia is intent on saving people's souls, here are three projects from Renzo Piano Building Workshop that are out to save your body. A big emphasis is being placed on biophilic design, a new trend which basically means buildings with plants on. Now, while the reasons for biophilic design are sometimes questionable, the generous healing parks that these hospitals feature do seem worth the effort, just maybe not getting ill for in the first place. We're back to skyscrapers now, as something huge is about to loom over Toronto. This is the one which when completed will stand 306 meters high and become Toronto's first super tall skyscraper. Designed by Foster and Partners, the tower is being built around eight enormous columns which run the height of the building. The structure's floors are then hung off of these using diagonal beams. 2025 was due to be the year the one completed, but that's now looking pretty unlikely. In fact, it was originally due to open back in 2022, but long story short, it racked up over a billion dollars in debt, and the lead developer was kicked off the project last year. One city that's having a bit more luck with its skyscrapers is good old New York. 2025 will see the completion of 270 Park Avenue. Set to be the new headquarters of banking giant JP Morgan Chase, it's full of every luxury you'd expect for a tower full of incredibly wealthy bankers. But what's most impressive is what lies below ground. Reinforcements were built underneath the existing foundations. The whole structure was then lifted up onto stilts to create a public plaza underneath. The weight of the building is being taken by a series of dramatic V-shaped columns carefully placed onto the foundations below. Now, we can't talk about skyscrapers without mentioning China. It might have banned the construction of anything over 500 meters back in 2020, but it hasn't stopped its appetite for building big. First up is the Great River Center, a 400 meter office building which marks the center of a wider development on the Yangtze River. Its demure appearance is a reference to this, an ancient Chinese stringed instrument. It's an attempt to champion simple, elegant refinements over dramatic flourishes. 
At quite the other end of the spectrum, one place that has no issue embracing dramatic flourishes is the Zaha Hadid Architects designed Taikang Financial Center. Just downstream from the Great River Center, we brought you pictures on social media last year that showed it nearing completion with its opening due later in 2025. The center's made of three towers arranged around a new central courtyard, but if you think that's dramatic, wait till you see what Zaha Hadid has planned for Shenzhen. This is the Oppo headquarters, which will complete later this year. It's a classic Zaha D design and features 185,000 square meters spread over four towers connected by a series of atriums. Shenzhen's built a reputation as being China's Silicon Valley, and buildings like this will only cement its position as a futuristic destination. Closing off our list of Chinese skyscrapers are the towers of the Sunny Irisek headquarters in Guangzhou. These towers rest on an elevated platform that creates a plaza at ground level. The roof of this plaza creates shelter from the harsh sun, while the underside of the ceiling is plated in dimple aluminium to create a sense of brightness. Further up, the tower's triangular grid-like structure creates a rigid form to protect the building from earthquakes, while its inward sloping facades shade the offices in sight. Now, before we leave China altogether, a quick word on something a little bit different. This is the Cloud9 Sports Center. Due to open later in 2025, it's going to feature commercial spaces, a gym, and indoor and outdoor tennis courts. But nothing will be quite as athletic as the building itself. Designed by Chinese studio Mad Architects, it's being built in a major park and is designed to reflect the local area. 2025 is going to be a huge year for ITER, the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor. Located in the south of France, this amazing project is a collaboration between 35 different countries. When complete, it has the potential to provide near limitless amounts of clean energy, all thanks to the power of nuclear fusion. If you want a rundown on the difference between fusion and more traditional fission power plants, then check out our full-length documentary on what is quite possibly the world's most complex construction projects. Finally, what happens when a dam starts to fall? Dams like the Spitalam Dam play a part in producing more than 60% of Switzerland's energy. But unlike many other dams in this country, Spitalam has a crack running through it. When it was completed back in 1932, this was one of the first large arch gravity dams ever constructed. An impressive achievement, but one that also meant engineers didn't fully understand the stresses it would be under. The replacement dam has been under construction since 2019. To make sure it doesn't fall prey to the same problems, it was designed to curve in two directions, both horizontally and vertically. This means the dam's walls can be thinner, so fewer materials are used, while still having the strength needed to hold back all that water. This has been a truly epic build, where the remote location and heavy winter weather have been a constant battle. And that's it! We've made it to the end of the top 25 projects of 2025. If you're still watching at this point, we love you. Don't forget, we're going to be covering all these projects and more this year on the B1M, so make sure you're subscribed to get all the latest updates. I'm now officially exhausted, and I'm going to go for a bit of a lie down. In the meantime, don't forget that we're inspiring the next generation of builders through our investment into BrickBorrow, a fantastic LEGO subscription service. You can learn more and get started today over at BrickBorrow.com. And as always guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction in 2025, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.